Hi everyone, I came to birth some good news. Myself, along with the whole Permit team, are excited to announce that ABAC, or in other words, attribute-based access control is now available within the Permit UI. This means that with our low-code interface, you are able to create complex policies within the matter of minutes and enforce an even stricter permission management. ABAC is important because it expands on the basic concept of role-based access control, allowing us to evaluate attributes or characteristics rather than roles, meaning that we can grant more complex permissions and create stronger enforcement points. Now, I'd like to use this time to guide you through a very simple example of how we can create an ABAC policy within Permit. But of course, before we start, we need a rule that we can work with. So, for the purpose of the video, we will go with the following. Only users who are based in the USA and are part of the engineering department can subscribe to services that are over 500 US dollars without approval. Complex, right? Imagine having hundreds of rules like this in your system and having to implement each one of them. Ha! <laughs> well, glad you don't have to do that anymore because we have a back. So without any further ado, let's jump into the permit UI. Let's break this policy down into specific segments and show you how we can create uh, rules within permit to apply that condition to specific users that meet those attributes. So what you can currently see in front of you is the permit UI. And what you can specifically see is the users panel where we have our users defined. Now I've created a user called jacob at permit.io. That's the email, but it's also the unique identifier of that user. So when you're going for your authentication solution and that generates a generic ID for your user, you can actually use that to reference your user without passing in, you know, maybe important information into permit. But for showcase reasons, I've just used the email here. Now, currently we have no roles defined, but actually if we go into the policy editor, we can see that we have a manager role um, that is within our system. So I can go back into the users and I can actually assign this manager role to this specific user. Now we want to create our complex ABAC policy, meaning that the first thing we need to do is actually define attributes for the user and for the resource. So then we can create that complex rule. So we are on the users panel. So let's start with creating some user attributes and we can just select that right at the top. Then we can just click add attribute. And the first attribute that we're going to define is the location because we have our users that are based in the US. So location, and that's going to be a string. And then we'll create another attribute, which will be department because they have to be part of the engineering department. So we'll just create the department and we can just leave that as a string. So now we can just save our attributes and what you'll see is that the user attributes have been updated. So now we need to create attributes for our resources because we've got complex resources that require uh, more specific characteristics. So in this case, we go onto our policy editor and we can create a new resource. And in this case, the resource will be the a thing that we can perform actions on. So in this case, the resource will be called services because essentially we can subscribe to services. And like I said, one of the actions and the only action for the purpose of this tutorial will be uh, subscribe. There we go. Now we can actually go ahead and add attributes to this resource. So if I just click the attribute, add attribute button, and the first attribute that I want to define is the cost. And in this case, the cost will be a number because it's going to be greater than 500. And the other attribute that we're going to define is going to be called has approval. And then this will be a Boolean because either it can be true or false. Either the user has approval or they don't, right? So now we can go ahead and just save this resource. And what you'll notice is that under manager, now we've generated a, a services resource that has the action of being able to subscribe to those services. But we don't have a user set yet, nor we have a resource set. And that's because we have to go and create one. So let's start with the user set. You can just navigate onto the plus create button, and then we can just create a user set. Now the user set will be called um, engineering uh, managers based in the USA. So that's what we're going to call this specific user set. 
And then I'm going to add a condition group. Now a condition group combines um, our attributes with a specific value and a comparison operator. So then we can actually uh, create more complex policies. So in this case, for example, I'm going to say that the location equals the USA, and I can add another condition, which combines the first rule with a logical operator, which is the AND, and we're going to specify department equals um, engineering. And then we can save this user set. And upon saving this user set, it actually creates almost what seems like a role, but it's a more complex role because it has attributes applied to it. And it's defined by specifying that it's a set. And then of course we have the same resource underneath with the same action. So now we actually have to go ahead and create our resource set. And we can do that in the same way. We click the create button and we create a resource set. But in this case, we'll actually have to create two resource sets. The first one is if a user can subscribe uh, to services that are over 500 and another one if a user can subscribe to services that are below 500 US dollars. So in this case, I'm going to call the first one services below 500 USD and we're going to select the resource type which will, will be services and we can add our conditions to this uh, and the first condition like already pre-populated will be the cost and it's going to be less than 500 and the other condition will be has approval and it's going to equal true because any engineering manager or any other manager or any other role can have approval uh, to subscribe to services that are below 500. So in this case, this will be true. And then I can save this condition. Now we can create another resource set in the same way. And then this one will be services above 500 USD, and then we'll still select the services uh, resource type, and then we'll add conditions, and this one will be cost, and the comparison operator will be greater than or equals to 500, and then the condition has approval will also be equal to true, and now we can save the condition, and with doing this, we have actually fully defined a user set, and we have defined a resource set. So now it's actually taking those conditions and applying the appropriate ones to enforce those permission checks within our code base. So in this example, a manager that's not in the engineering department and might be based somewhere else in the world, well, they can subscribe to services that are below. And of course, that's totally valid. But of course, managers who are in the engineering department and are based in the USA, they can, of course, subscribe to services below 500, but I can also subscribe to services that are above 500 US dollars. And now we can just go and save this change. And now when we go into our code and we actually create a permit.check, we will be able to enforce those points and make sure that the user that is having the permissions checked for them will be or won't be able to subscribe to those services over a certain amount. Now, another thing I want to mention is that both of these resource sets in the same way that uh, user set is defined with a set here, the resource set also is defined in the same way, so you can easily recognize between the two. Now, of course, I want to show you how this would actually work in your code and how you would enforce it. So I want to run really quickly through how would you define a permit.check function to enforce those permissions within your code base, within your application, and then we can go ahead and wrap up this tutorial. The permit check function takes three parameters, the user ID, the action, and the resource, which we can read as user X can perform this action on this specific resource. Now, this is a simple RBAC permission check. So how do we expand this to work with the newly introduced attributes for each user and resource to create an ABAC permission check? Well, it's actually very simple. Instead of the user, and the resource, rather than passing in directly the ID for the user or the name for the resource, we actually pass in an object. And in this case, for the user ID, going back to our example, we'll pass in the key as the user ID, and then the attributes, and then inside the attributes value, we'll create another object where we pass in the attributes that we have specified. So in this case, the location being equal to USA and the department being equal to engineering. 
Then we can create our action, which will be the subscribe. And then we can create our resource set, which will be another object that has a type called services, because that's what we called our resource. And then we'll, it's going to take in more attributes, which also will be an object, which will contain the attributes that we specified of has approval being equal to true and the cost equal to 500. Now that I've showed you how you can create complex ABAC policies with a permit, where we define the attributes for the users and the resources, where we create user sets and resource sets, and then we apply those to create whole condition rules to enforce the permissions within our system and how to implement those permissions within our code base with the permit.check function, I think I have done my job here and I can end the video on a good note. If you do have any other questions or you're struggling with something or you want to ask us about permit and about ABAC or about anything else, make sure to join our Slack, which is in the description of this video. And we will be more than happy to help you and answer your questions. Usually we answer questions almost in a few minutes, so you can be sure that you're going to get a reply really, really fast. Uh, so I invite you to join our Slack community. And on that note, I'm going to end the video and I wish you guys a wonderful day.